There have been rumors that CBS might finally cancel the long-running series, but thankfully those were untrue as Blue Bloods is currently in its 13th season, currently airing on Paramount Plus and CBS right now. You're welcome. And while we don't really know what's to come or what might happen due to budget cuts, but it's likely to continue to trend focusing on the Reagans and the law while using real life situations and drama. So why not bring some old faces from the past? While Blue Bloods doesn't indulge in nostalgia as much as other long running CBS shows, there's still a great bevy of characters with potential to return. Some were once regular faces that haven't been seen in a long while. And then there are other recurring characters who spark well that we'd like to see. Here's a look at 10 characters it would be fun to see on Blue Bloods again. Number 10. It's logical that kids grow up and leave the nest, yet it seems odd not to have Aaron's daughter around as much. It was terrific watching San Miguel grow up as Nikki from a teenager to a strong young woman. And for a while, she seemed to want to join the family business as a cop, which upset her mother, not wanting her in danger. Erin also clearly had trouble accepting her daughter was turning into just a strong and stubborn woman, which could occasionally get her in trouble. She left in season 10 for a job in San Francisco and made one brief appearance in season 11. Number nine, Erin is pretty busy with her career and not into too much romance. So it could be fun if a Miss Flame from her past could return. During a speed dating event, Aaron met Robert McCoy and some flirtation even as they argued. That ended when Aaron discovered that rather than a defense attorney, McCoy was her boss at the DA's office. Now, they still got along, well, until it was revealed that McCoy had actually been covering up because one of the cops involved was a friend of his father. He was forced to resign, but the possibility he could make a comeback is kind of cool. Number eight. A major part of the Reagans' lives is their strong Catholic faith. That makes the appearances of Archbishop Kevin Kearns really good. With his gruff demeanor, Stacy Keach is believable as Frank's longtime friend who's overseen such events from christening each kid to officiating Jamie and Eddie's wedding. Kearns can also take issue with some of NYPD's stances in religious matters. He also got heat for getting Frank to look into a possible abuse that exposed the priest had fathered a child. The discussions of the duo were always great and showed Frank's morals, yet how Kearns can be a bit strict even for Frank. But given all the issues of the Reagans, a little divine guidance could always help. Number seven, it's actually surprising that we don't have more conflict between NYPD and the fire department on this show. For instance, season six's episode with friends like these opens with some cops and police officers getting into a fight in Linda's hospital that turns into a full-fledged brawl. That brings in Stan Rourke, the fire commissioner who naturally clashes with Frank on who's to blame for it. And while they respect each other, it brings up a lot of long-standing rivalries between the two departments. With fire shows, no pun intended, hot thanks to Chicago Fire and Station 19, it would be kind of interesting seeing more of how they interact with cops and Stan helping out. Who knows, maybe CBS can launch an NYPD version of Blue Bloods as a spinoff with Rourke leading the way. Number six, Danny's own family thinks it's finally time he moved on from the death of his wife, Linda. And Maggie Gibson might be the way to do it. Callie Thorne's self-professed psychic once offered aid on a case. And naturally, Danny refused to believe she was more than a con artist, but acknowledged she did have some insight to help the case. He was thrown by Maggie's claims to have spoken to Linda's spirit, encouraging Danny to move on. But Danny in true fashion was intrigued and was even attracted enough to wonder if Maggie would have dinner with him. She hasn't been seen in a while, but Maggie would be a fun role and interesting to see her and Danny click more. Hopefully, Maggie knows better than anyone what the future holds for her and Danny. Number five, all through season 10, Frank has had to handle the problems of accusations of harassment and corruption in the NYPD, which makes a prime moment for the return of Robert Lewis. Played by Soprano star Michael Imperoloni, Lewis was a state prosecutor seemingly just doing his job investigating Danny shooting a serial killer. But Lewis showed his true colors by launching a witch hunt into the NYPD. He openly mocked Frank for being so out of touch and even accused him of covering up corrupt officers when Frank had been working with him. And it was unknown if Lewis was striking out of political motivations or if this was a personal grudge, but did cross lines going after Frank. 
Given the current climate, Lewis would have further fuel to clash with Frank, and that battle would kind of be epic to watch play out. Number four, he might not have been the most popular guy, but Darnell Potter was a prime sparring partner for the Reagans. The spotlight-loving local reverend would always be accusing the NYPD of harassment, often unwarranted, and was totally convinced Frank was covering for corrupt officers. More than once, Danny had to hold back belting the guy on camera. The fiery preacher may have meant well, but often went over the top with his media appearances and riling people up. However, he was softened when his son was murdered and worked with the police to bring the killer to justice. Given how this series addresses real life issues of police behavior, it would make sense for Potter to make a long overdue return. The fact that he has a point in some of his ranting fuels it. Number three, Kelly Peterson was a much needed charge to Frank's life. The New York Inspector General took no gruff and was not interested in playing Frank's usual games. Yet, he respected her toughness and it was clear there was chemistry, helped by a past relationship. And even the rest of the family was encouraging Frank to think of Kelly as more than just a working acquaintance, but he was reluctant. As it turned out, Kelly actually resigned as she couldn't trust herself to be professional enough around Frank. Yet that clash leading to a possible romance was a fun arc for fans. Seeing as Peterson isn't too busy now, and let's face it, Frank is overdue for a romantic connection if nothing else, and Kelly was one of his best chances for it. Number two. As great as Baez has been as Danny's partner, Jackie was his first. Now she was a tough cop who overcame a difficult marriage to be a tenacious investigator. Now, she could take some cases personally, but was more than ready to wipe the floor with any scumbag suspect. But she wasn't perfect with some of her viewpoints. However, she did get along really well with the Reagans, including being friends with his late wife, Linda. It would be fun to catch up with Jackie and see how she's doing, and a mix of Danny's partners joining up for a case. Number one. Already a cop show veteran thanks to NYPD Blue, Nicholas Turturro was always an excellent choice to play Jamie's first training officer. A great touch of the dynamic was Rizzuli, respecting Jamie not coasting on the family name, even as he poked fun at Jamie wanting to be a lawyer before becoming a cop. And the pair got along well, with Renzuli showing Jamie the ropes on the streets and giving him much needed advice. He got Jamie to see that being by the book was good. However, it was okay to bend the rules every now and then. Renzuli was later shot and moved to a desk job in the precinct. That was the last fans have seen of him, but it would be good to catch up and see what he's up to. Perhaps he moved up or even retired. It'd be nice to have Renzuli check up on Jamie and be proud of how far his former protege is gone. Now, it's your turn. Are there any Blue Bloods characters that you'd like to see return? Let us know in the comments. And as always, like this video, share if you care, but be sure to subscribe and we'll see you all at the next one.